What's up, Barbarians? Today, we have an update to the Ren Barb. I've changed quite a bit, so I thought I'd show it off again. And let's do pit level 80. Okay, the only thing we have to do is our fire resistance is not maxed out. So we do need a fire potion. And away we go. So we've made some significant changes to how we play. And it has increased our damage quite a bit. I've also found the air of perdition, which also helps as well. Helps out quite a bit. Rend is my absolute favorite playstyle. I'm glad it can do more. And I don't know how much more I'm going to push. But we'll see. We'll show this one off first. One of the major changes we made... Alright, one of the major changes that we made is that we use Earthquakes. That makes quite a significant difference. We still use the Ancients for our Fury. We still stand still to get as much from Intercom and from Earthquakes now. And overall it does work pretty good. We're still looking for those big groups. Like this one right here. Drag him in. Use ground stomp for more earthquakes. And away you go. You can't <coughs> excuse me. You can stand still when there's ground effects, but you just have to be careful with your iron skin. If your iron skin isn't back up, then you have to move out of the way or hit rupture so that you can make sure that the cooldown is up and you can use it as needed. Iron skin is very, very important. And we do still use rupture quite often. It's a good way to finish enemies, but it's also good just because it's an amazing skill. I'm kind of thinking there might be a, I don't know if a rupture only build would be good, but that's something I may look into actually. Wanton's Rupture, maybe the Fields of Crimson. I would, I really want that weapon to be good. I think it's really sad that it's not, to be honest. It's made for bleed, and it is better now than it was. But still doesn't really do it. Okay. Drag them all in. Ground Stomp, Rend, Rapture. Stomp. So I have to say, I am not using Creeping Death. And I'm also not using the Disembowed Glyph anymore. I think it's really unfortunate that the Disembowelith is not going to be used for a damage over time build. But there's just better glyphs out there, unfortunately. In the beginning, it is 
a little bit necessary for that cooldown. But once you have your cooldowns pretty good, you don't need it anymore. And the amount of damage over time that it actually gives you is not significant compared to what other glyphs can give you. Because of that, it's really not necessary. So I feel damage over time needs... It doesn't need a complete rework. It just needs some love. It needs it needs a little like the disembowelment needs a little bit of love. If, if you could multiplicatively scale your bleed damage instead of just scaling regular damage, and it would scale higher than regular damage, just like the damage over time skills already do, I think that would be a good start. Especially where our gushing wounds scales with our damage over time. But well, I don't know, would that make it too powerful if it was also another multiplier? Hard to say. That guy's gonna die. Always sucks going the wrong way. Alright, so let's find another big group. Drag some more enemies in. Get the party started over here. But yeah, I really do feel that bleed just needs a little... It, it just needs a little boost. I'm pretty satisfied that this rend can do level 80. I have pushed a little further. Right now, the biggest thing I'm stuck on is my, my glyphs. My glyphs are the low 80s, like I think they're all about 82. And getting them to a higher amount is getting difficult because I'm failing on my master working. On my on my glyphs. And sometimes it is the boss will dictate if you're gonna hit or miss some of the higher levels. So that's a little tough. But I am glad that I can find a way to make this a little bit higher than before. Alright, almost done. This will be the last pack here. I'm gonna get hit by those guys. There we go. Who is the boss? Okay. So we wanna stand still as much as possible. And you wanna also use rupture as much as possible. So as soon as that your rupture goes, you want to increase it again, as in when your your attack bonus goes up, and you can tell because it'll be gold. There's a little bar up top there of my rupture. It always tells me when I'm done, important to keep that up. Walk around for a moment. See our attack skill our attack speed is just a little too slow. And we do need we do need rupture just to make it go a little faster.
Almost done. Okay, she will kill us. Gotta get away from her. But you want to stand still as much as possible. That was close. All right, round the home stretch here. There we go. Okay, bossing with Rend is now a little bit easier. And I gotta say, I'm very happy that this can clear level 80. I have cleared level 81. I haven't pushed too far yet, but I am excited to keep pushing this to see how far this can go. In the helmet, we have the Air of Perdition, and I got lucky and got a greater affix on core skills. And with the Rend setup, we don't need any more critical strike chance. In here, we wanted it on unlucky hit chance because the more lucky hit we have, the more the Rage of Hairgath works for us. You would either want your mass working to hit on Lucky Hit or Core Skills. Next we have the Rage of Hairgath. I finally found an upgrade to my old one. We would like to have a greater affix on maximum life. Absolutely amazing chest piece, must need it for any bleed build. We did get some new gloves because we are now missing some armor. With the Harlequin Crest, that usually has our armor, so I did put armor on my gloves. Not ideal, but necessary. And here we have the Edge Masters. For tempers, you want damage over time and rend size. You need at least to have one temper of rend size. We don't need any more critical strike chance, so I went for strength, attack speed, and armor. If your armor's capped out, go for ranks to rend. Next, we have the Pants of the Iron Warrior. Iron Warrior is absolutely amazing. One of the best skills, in my opinion. The Iron Warrior creates you to be unstoppable, and mine gives me 35% damage reduction. The biggest thing you want on your pants is life. Next would be strength, and then some resistances as needed. I have two tempers to rend size. You at least need one. I think two's great, but you either want rend size or steel grass stuns. Next, we have the Weapon Master on the boots with max life, armor, poison res, movement speed, and steel grass stuns. You definitely want two charges of rupture and three charges of steel grasp. The closer you can get all the enemies in, the better it is for your earthquakes and for your rend. That's why you really only need one rank to rend size, but two just makes it easier because also you want your enemies to be inside the earthquake. Next, we have the Mace of Intercom. I finally found an upgrade. And this one has strength, max life, and a greater affix on damage over time. That is so huge. That greater affix on damage over time is actually more than the Disembowel Glyph itself. That's why we took Disembowel out. Even our temper gives us more physical damage over time than our Disembowel Glyph. And on here, you do want one to cut to the bone. On your other two-hander, you're going to want to hit Chance for Ren to hit twice. And on here, we do need the runes. And what these runes are for is so that we can have have a barrier and we're using the barrier because we have conceded on so we want to have the barrier up 24 7 to get more damage and with the intercom it works very well with the earthquakes we'll go over that in a moment for your runes you want tam q next is the magnum opus if you want as most damage as possible you must use the magnum opus you want your master working to hit on maximum resource and or strength then we have the conceited aspect very important that this is a mace this has to be a mace because we take the wallop passive and on here you want strength max life damage over time damage over time again and ren to hit twice very important to have chance for ren to hit twice to be up to a hundred percent as close as possible and because we use conceited that's why we use iron skin and that's why we also use the Q rune that gives us a barrier next we are using a two-handed axe with the earthquake aspect with strength max life damage over time damage over time again and chance for Ren to hit twice I have a 92.6 percent chance for Ren to hit twice. That's why you want to hit at least one of your master workings on chance for Ren to hit twice. And on here we have with the earthquake aspect that while we're standing in earthquakes we deal 50% increased damage. At first had creeping death on here because creeping death deals 40% and then 80% to staggered bosses. And unfortunately with creeping death we don't stagger the boss enough 
to actually use that 80%. Because of that, Creeping Death really, really sucks for bossing, and I found I could clear the pit very well, and then when it came to the boss, it was taking too much time, and my Creeping Death aspect wasn't doing anything. And the amount of time that you do stagger a boss, it doesn't give you enough uptime to actually use that 80% damage bonus. So I found something that I could use all the time, when I'm fighting the boss, and that's why we use the Lith Tech Rune. So we have to stand still for 1.2 seconds, and we're going to get an Earthquake. And if you have your Grand Stomp ready, you can have an Earthquake right away. And now our Ground Stomp creates physical damage over time. Next, we use the Ring of the Ravenous. Very important to use this ring. Always make sure that you have one with the max duration size to rent. That is the most important thing for this ring. Next, we have the Ring of Starless Skies. Love that the attack speed also hit and the lucky hit chance hit for our masterworking and the core skills. Here, we use the Slaking Aspect with percent strength, attack speed, critical strike chance, damage to Berserking, and I needed some cold resistance. The slaking aspect really helps us with the Ring of Starless Skies to have 100% full fury when we are doing the pits, doing anything, and that makes sure that our edge master stays up so we get the full damage bonus from this. I did need to put an armor roll on here as my armor is just capped. Our attack speed is 72% and our critical strike chance is 100%. Our weapon expertise is a two-handed axe. For the skill tree, we put two points in Flay. We don't use Flay. You can put these two points in any of these skills as you'd like. We take seven points into Rend, into Violent Rend, one point into Pressure Point for three points into Warpath, which will proc every time you hit Rupture. And because we are using Rupture roughly every five seconds, this damage bonus stays up pretty much indefinitely. Then we take three points in Tempered Fury for the Magnum Opus. We take three points into Ground Stomp, into Tactical Ground Stomp. This gives us more damage, and because Ground Stomp does deal some damage over time and it makes enemies vulnerable, this is a great skill. If for some reason you do need more cooldown on your your ultimate you could take strategic and because it's now a brawling skill we get more points into ground stomp because of our ring of the ravenous three points in posing presence three points into martial vigor three points into iron skin for tactical iron skin always match iron skin with the aspect of the iron warrior three points into swiftness three points into aggressive resistance i put my last two points into battle fervor as now grand stomp is a brawling skill and this will make sure that we are berserking Three points into Pit Fighter, three points into Slaying Strike, one point into Exposed Vulnerability, three points into Rupture, into Warrior's Rupture, and this is why we Rupture every five seconds for that extra attack speed. We have three points into Cut to the Bone, and this is why you want one of your Masterworkings to hit on Cut to the Bone, as we have 13 total ranks. Three points into Steel Grasp for Fighter Steel Grasp, one point to Thick Skin, take three points into Counter Offensive, and two points into Irrepressible. We take three points into Call of the Ancients for Supreme call of the ancients use this all the time as this is our main fury generator we take three points in duelist as we are dual wielding we take three points in invigorating furies we take three points into wallop because we are using a mace this bonus is up all the time and we are stunning enemies all the time with ground stomp and our steel grass stuns and our key passive is gushing wounds and this is why we want so much damage over time because of that 70 percent multiplicative bonus for this build make sure that rupture and rend are on dual wield. For the Paragon board, our first board is Empty Dexterous and take all these nodes just to give them a boost so we can get all the bonuses needed. Our next board is Decimator, where we take Rumble. Rumble is so important for the additional bonus. You deal 10 increased damage to bosses and crowd controlled enemies for each active earthquake up to 50%. Without Ground Stomp, you can get this to 3. With Ground Stomp, you will be able to hit the 50%. This, plus the earthquake aspect, gives us so much increased damage, we can do more levels. Our next board is Hemorrhage, where we take Challenger. And with Challenger, if you have extra points, I would always put them in this board, as we are getting a bonus with all these regular nodes. For extra points, put them in Challenger. That 5 will turn into a 9. Our next board is Blood Rage for Ire. Our final board is Warbringer for Wrath. And the reason we use Wrath is because we get the additional bonus with Gushing Wounds. Make sure you get these nodes here for our Magnum Opus. 
This build was a lot of fun to make, and it was really fun to see that Rend can do 10 more levels than my previous video. The main reason of that would be the Air of Perdition, the Aspect of Earthquakes, and the Rumble Glyph. Those three pieces made quite a significant change. Very important to use Lith Tech Rune. This will guarantee you to get, have so much extra damage, and that's why it's important we stand still as much as possible and drag the enemies to us. That is also why Intercom is on the two-hander instead of Edge Master. This build was a lot of fun to play. I'm glad I tried it again, and I was glad I was able to get some more damage out of it. The biggest change we need now is to increase our glyphs just to see how far we can go with this build, because our gear is almost completely masterworked. We are missing one to two masterworkings on most of the pieces, and do need to find a greater affix to Ring of the Ravenous. There are small things we can do that could make a significant impact. Alright guys, thanks for watching the update to Ren, and I will see you guys next time time.